Hello everybody and welcome to another HitFilm Express 2017 tutorial. Today, we're just going to be going through the basics of the program. Today's tutorial is going to be rated 1 star out of 5 on the difficulty scale. So, we're just going to start off in this splash screen here. The splash screen is a handful of tutorials, tweets, and other things that get you pumped to use the program. You'll notice at the top that there are four tabs, Home, Project, Edit, and Export. We're currently on the Home tab. Open recent projects and create new ones on the left. We're going to create a new one, so just hit the new button. Now we'll be moving over into the project tab, which is where you define your project settings. Here, you can select a template resolution and frame rate, or select your own. You can even choose up to 4K resolution. Once you're done, hit start editing to begin editing. Now, we're going into the edit tab. This is where you do all of your editing, and where you'll be spending almost all of your time in HitFilm. There are a lot of panels here, so we're just going to be going through them now, one by one. Here's the media panel. You sort out your media here, importing and organizing, and then you put it into your timeline with the trimmer panel here. Then there's the editing timeline, which is where you assemble and rearrange your clips and media to form your film. You have the viewer up here, which is where you view the content in your editing timeline, and your audio levels here. You also have controls to adjust clip properties and effect properties, an audio mixer, an effects panel to apply effects, a text panel for editing text, and a track panel for motion tracking. By the way, all of this is customizable by clicking on the grid button here. The default workspace is editing. So let's start off in the media panel. To import your clips, very simple, just hit the import button. Here I've got some video files, images, and a soundtrack. Next, the trimmer. When you select a clip in the media panel, you see it previewed in the trimmer. You can play it back, as well as set in and out points using this button, and that button. Or you can hit I and O on your keyboard. An in point sets where the clip starts, and the out point sets where it ends. This is just kind of a preliminary trimming before it goes into your editing timeline. You can hit this button right here to drop that trim version into your timeline. So let's have a look at this editing timeline. First of all, we can zoom in on it using this slider in the bottom left. It's track based, so we can see one video track, video 1, and one audio track, audio 1. By the way, the video track contains only visuals, no audio. So if we add an image here, we can see that it has a video section but no audio. If we drag in an audio track, there's no visuals. You can drag multiple files onto the same track, one after another, but if you want to have two playing at the same time, you have to drag them onto another track. For example, I can drag this image above the other video, and it will create a new video track for me. Clips on higher tracks will show above those below. To create a new audio track, simply right click on the existing track, and create a new audio track. Now let's get into the editing tools. The default selection tool here can do a lot of things. You can select clips, move them around, and shorten and lengthen them. There's also the drag tool, which you can use to drag left and right in the timeline, and the slice tool. The slice tool splits your clips so that you can edit them separately. There are other tools too, but we won't go into them today. Let's open the controls tab. Here you can adjust the properties of a clip and its effects. In a video's layer properties, you can adjust the blending mode. Under transform, you can adjust position, scale, rotation, anchor point, which is the place objects rotate and scale from, and opacity which is pretty self-explanatory. For audio clips, you can adjust the level or loudness under layer properties. Make sure that if you want to adjust the loudness of a video with audio in it as well, that you select the actual audio track rather than the visual video track. 
Let's open up the effects panel. Here are a ton of effects for you to use in your projects. I'm going to get a simple brightness and contrast effect and just drag it onto my video. In the controls tab, I can adjust this effect. In this particular case, I can adjust the brightness and the contrast. Transitions are also in effect. To show you, I'll grab a transition here and drag it onto the end of my video. Now we're going to talk about composite shots. Composite shots are places in which you can do more advanced visual effects. There are two ways to initially create a composite shot. You can create a blank one, or create one out of an existing clip. Most of the time you'll create one out of an existing clip. To do this, select your clip and hit make composite shot. Rename it and hit OK. Now you'll notice that we're in our own separate timeline. So let's take a look at this composite shot. Here the timeline is different. In composite shots, every clip has its own track. You can't put them next to each other on the same track. This means that it's easier to composite multiple assets one over another. Let's take a look at how we can create text. Text can only be created in a composite shot. To do this, just hit new layer, text. You can set a custom text box size. We can change this later anyway. Just hit OK. Now, go to the text tool on the top left of the viewer. Select inside your text box and type. You can expand the text box by dragging on the bottom right corner. Once you're done, select your text and go over to the text panel. You can select a custom font, size and color. I'm going to leave mine white. OK, so that's text. Let's just quickly go back to the editor. We can see that now we have text embedded into that clip. Nice. It's time to talk about something else, keyframing. Keyframing is HitFilm's method of animation, and can only be done properly in composite shots. One popular use of keyframing is to animate the position of objects in the screen, but we're going to be doing something even cooler. Go back to the composite shot you created, and press New Layer, Plane. Select Black, and rename it. Hit OK. Now, search for the Light Flares effect, and drag it on. Select a cool Light Flare. My favourite is probably Digital Blocks. Now go into the layer properties for this plane layer and select Add or Screen, which will make it brighter in the layers below it. Position the light flare on your text by selecting the actual effect and then moving the light flare around. Now it's time to do some keyframing. Let's open up the layer here by clicking on the arrow. Then open up your light flare controls. Let's mess with the intensity. Go to the beginning of the timeline and hit the circle next to intensity. You'll notice that three things just happened. Firstly, a diamond appeared, the circle went blue, and there was a blue circle within that blue circle. The blue color of the circle indicates that keyframing is now enabled. The diamond is the actual keyframe. The blue circle within the circle indicates that on this frame, there is a keyframe. Set the value to be zero so that the light flare doesn't show. Then go a couple of seconds in. Just change the value and a keyframe will automatically be created. Each keyframe saves that value at that position in time. So now it will gradually change the intensity from nothing to something between the keyframes. You can keyframe almost anything in a composite shot, so go wild. I've now applied a lightning and electricity effect and keyframed a couple of values. You'll notice that as time goes by, it becomes more and more laggy. To fix this, we'll do one of two things. We can lower the resolution by clicking on full in the top right hand corner. We can lower it to something like quarter to get lower resolution, but hopefully more frames. Alternatively, you can do a RAM preview. This is only for composite shots. I'm going to set my resolution back to full just to do this RAM preview. Hit the circular play button right here and it will start rendering out your video. Just let it run and when it's done, you'll be able to see which bits are RAM previewed by looking at the blue sections of this little timeline here. In these blue bits, you can play it back at full resolution at proper frames without having even exported it. 
but if you leave the composite shot or change an effect, then you'll have to re-render it again. And now you've got everything done. You've got all your editing, all your sound, all your music, all your composites. Now it's time to export. You can hit one of these two buttons right here. You can export the contents, in other words, everything you have in your timeline, or an in and out points, which can be set using I and O on your keyboard. I'm just going to export the contents of this composite shot. A dialog box shows up, telling us that we can go to the export queue or keep compositing. Let's go to the export queue to see what it's all about. Now we're in the export queue, in the fourth tab called export. You can see that we have one task on the left. This one here is from before, so I'll delete it. You can add multiple tasks to the export queue and you can export them one after another. This shows what it is exporting as well as a preset. On the right hand side of the screen you can see the presets. These are predefined export settings. For example, YouTube 1080p is a preset that exports 1080p video in quality suitable for YouTube to upload. You can create a custom preset by clicking here, and change the output destination by clicking here. To export, just make sure you've got that task and choose a preset. Then just hit start exporting and we'll export everything in your queue. And you're done. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, leave a like, share this with your friends, and stay subscribed for more content just like this. I'll see you in the next one. Stay shiny. Bye.